everyone. My name is Emily Traster, and I am here today with Dan Dalton, one of the co-founders of the law firm Dalton and Tomich. Dan has helped a number of churches leave the United Methodist denomination and keep their property. How are you doing today, Dan? I'm doing great this morning, Emily. Good morning. Well, good to see you. Uh, today, we're going to discuss the state of the United Methodist Church and where Dan sees the church going in 2022. So, Dan, why don't you start us off with discussing the current state of the United Methodist Church denomination? The traditionalists won the battle, but really lost the war after 2019 in the General Conference. Uh, they won the idea of uh, doctrine, and they had the votes to uh, preserve the doctrine, but they lost the battle because the bishops and those within the institution has really very much fought against traditionalists uh, moving forward. This has ended into a, uh, a just a, a dispute that can't be resolved and a separation that must occur somewhere down the line. Um, but it hasn't occurred yet. There was, there's been a separation protocol negotiated outside the denomination. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later as to whether I think it'll pass, but uh, it's not looking well. Regardless of that, the bishops gave themselves a raise. Uh, the bishops think things are going well apparently, and uh, financially they, they just gave themselves a raise. Yet their fund that pays them, the Episcopal fund is running empty. Um, there's a deep, deep financial issues in the denomination right now. Uh, the, the report from the General Council of Finance and Administration indicates that only 79% of apportionments were paid in uh, 2020. Um, it's the lowest in history. Uh, the General Council has recommended a budget cut of 31%. So nearly one third of all budgets are gonna be cut uh, in 2021, uh, moving forward. The committees and councils of the uh, United Methodist Church are, are basically going out of business. Uh, they're selling assets, the publishing house, the global board of ministry, they've sold their property. Uh, other committees are basically down to, you know, 50% of their budget. They've laid off staff. Uh, the publishing house has, is basically done. Uh, it's no longer gonna exist. And what we'll see probably by the end of 2022 is, is that all those councils and committees will go away. Uh, UMCOR will remain because that's healthy. Uh, Westpath, which is outside of the denomination now, is healthy. They have $28 billion in assets, um, but things are going to go down. On top of that, you have the Boy Scout case. Uh, the Boy Scouts have a, a tremendous liability outstanding. They don't have insurance to cover their liability. They don't have assets to cover their liability. So next in line is sponsoring church, churches, and you've probably read that uh, the Mormon Church of Latter-day Saints have put in $250 million to extinguish their claims. The second largest church, United Methodists, they don't have $250 million, they don't have $100 million, they don't have $50 million, they don't have the money to satisfy uh, that liability. So with that, we just see a denomination spiraling, likely out of existence uh, sooner than later. What is your opinion as to whether there will be a general conference in August 2022? I don't think it's going to happen, Emily. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is primarily the institutionalists don't want it to happen. Uh, nobody that's in the Council of Bishops right now really privately will tell you that they want to see the church split or publicly. Um, the second thing is, is there's no financial means to have a general conference next year. They don't have the money to do it. Uh, they have to have one in 2024 as well. So they can't afford one. They clearly can't afford two. Uh, you can even look at the Minneapolis Convention website. And you can see all, everything's scheduled for 2022. Uh, and you're not going to see a general conference in August and September. I, it's just clear to me it's not going to happen. I, I think uh, we're going to get an announcement end of February, early of March, uh, where uh, there'll be an announcement saying that there's not going to be a general uh, conference in 2022. Do you think a separation protocol will pass? You know, Emily, publicly, we've heard uh, all the affinity groups come out and support it. Uh, privately, what I'm hearing from trustees, from clergy, from uh, clients, from people all across the denomination, progressive, centrist, traditionalists who all want out of the denomination, actually, uh, is, is that uh, they really don't think it's going to pass. Uh, it's not going to... We don't believe there's going to be a conference in 2022. 
in 2024, the voters, the general conference will be progressive and, and mostly uh, institutionalists who don't want to see the protocol pass. Uh, so we just, uh, I know again, publicly, uh, people are saying it's going to pass, but privately, uh, I'm just hearing from every source, you know, conservative, uh, traditional, institutionalist, it's just not going to happen. Is the separation protocol unconstitutional? Likely it is. Um, you know, the, the United Methodist Constitution says you cannot vote to uh, really to disaffiliate or, or to dismantle the denomination. Uh, so a vote to uh, dismantle the denomination is likely unconstitutional. There was a great paper written by a professor from Southern Methodist University who analyzed this in detail, but it really comes down to that. If the constitution says you can't separate, then you can't vote to separate. It's unconstitutional. What advice do you have for local churches who are trying to figure out what they should do to protect their property and preserve their ministry in the future? Really, the first thing they should do is, is they should create a leadership team to discuss where the church wants to be three to five years from now. So just kind of looking out in the next 36 months, is the church going to survive? Is it going to grow? Do they need new pastors? Can they retain their pastors and staff? Uh, what does the community look like? Will it support the church? Just kind of get that big picture look of where the church is going to be. The next thing is, is they should figure out what kind of church they're going to be. Are they going to be progressive, conservative, institutionalist? You know, what is, what is the church? And really kind of have those discussions. After that, they should talk to their pastor and figure out where their pastor is going to be. You know, does the pastor want to stay within the denomination? Do they want to leave? Do they want to be conservative, progressive? Just to see if there's an alignment with the pastor in, in the, in the uh, congregation. And, and typically there is, because typically people will go to a church that aligns with their beliefs, which is really the, what the pastor has to say. After that, you should canvas your congregation either through a, a, a survey or you know speaking in small groups and Bible studies and talking to those 20% of the people that actually come to church and do things and donate and tithe and are involved and find out where they're at and, and see if you're all on the same page. And then after that, work with experienced uh, attorneys and professionals and figure out what is your governance currently? Uh, how are your assets titled? What do you need to do to move forward to be a independent church if that's the plan or if you wanna be uh, part of the post-separation United you know, Methodist Church, if that's the plan? What, how, how do you best preserve your ministry and protect your property moving forward? And those are difficult discussions, uh, but it's discussions that you really need to have because quite frankly, the United Methodist Church as is, it is exists today is not gonna exist probably in the next two or three years. You, you need to do something. So uh, taking those steps is really what you should do. What is your prediction as to where the denomination will be at the end of 2022? You know, everybody is really has an opinion as to predictions, and my predictions are are you can take them with a grain of salt. I mean, I always predict every year that the Detroit Lions are going to win the Super Bowl, and here we are at 0 and 8 uh, in in November of 2021. But I think it's very clear that the denomination will not continue the way it is today. Um, it's going to continue to uh, dwindle in size. Uh, assets are going to continue to be sold. Uh, you know, camps are, are selling right now, uh, office buildings, uh, conference, uh, any type of asset that the conference has to sell, uh, they're looking at selling. Uh, members are fleeing, clergy are, are retiring, um, people are not entering ministry uh, to be part of the United Methodist Church. Uh, there was just a report that came out that the lowest number of elders and deacons uh, are are reporting right now. There's just, people just don't want to be part of this denomination. And quite frankly, you can definitely see why. The average age of people coming into the denomination of service clergy is 55. What that tells you, it's just second career people. So people that are looking to serve maybe 15 years at most, uh, if, if they can uh, make it through. So you have an you have a older demographic as congregates, you have uh, younger people not joining uh, churches, not donating, you have, uh, uh, you know, clergy retiring, this whole wave of great resignation that's happening right now, it's, it's really help, happening in the Methodist Church as well, because people are just, you know, tired of the battle, and they just see this 
uh, illusory promise of something will change. And it just is not going to change because there's, again, there's no desire of those within the institution to see things change. So I just see the, the church collapsing. Uh, you know, we, we, we know in 2020, I think 51 churches left the denomination. We're on track for about 200 in 2021 right now. Um, I see um, asset grabbing is going to occur. I see the conferences coming down harder on local churches who are not in line with uh, their theology. Um, and I see uh, th this denomination ending uh, soon. It's not going to end in 2022, uh, but within probably by 2030, I think we'll no longer have a United Methodist Church. However, there's hope. Uh, and that hope is for you as local leaders of your churches to create something new. Uh, one remarkable thing we've seen in the churches that we've taken out through the denomination is that every church has grown, every single one. And what's remarkable too is, is that the people that come to those churches are the ones that have left your local church. So they may not have left their membership, but they stopped attending and, and, and they're going someplace else. But once they hear that the local church has left uh, the denomination, people come back. I mean, we had one in uh, the Florida Annual Conference, they were down to about 30 attenders. Uh, the week after uh, they left the denomination, uh, 200 showed up. Another one in, in the Memphis Conference, uh, they were down to about 40 attenders. Uh, they had about 300, and they're now averaging 400 per week. Uh, a large church in uh, Illinois, in Fairview, Illinois, uh, they're seeing a growth surge, and, and uh, they're seeing baptisms and confirmations, and really people coming back. And, and it's remarkable too, because in this time of COVID, a lot of churches, you know, the people have just stopped coming because of the online services. But we see in churches who leave the denomination, a, a, a resurgence, a fire and inspiration. And, and it's a wonderful thing to see. And I'm, again, I'm not advocating that you don't join a new denomination. And, you know, if you're, if you need a denomination, that, that's up uh, to you and, and you might find it. But what I'm telling you is, is churches that have left now and become independent are now strong, healthy churches, and they're growing. The direct opposite is happening in United Methodist Church. As always, thank you for your insight, Dan. If you're watching this video and you have any questions or our firm could be of any service to you, please email or call us today. Thank you.